So the thing is, most of us have some issues around sexuality. Hardly anyone um, has an easy, playful, carefree approach to sexuality, sensuality anymore because most of us have been in some way wounded or triggered uh, and we have been conditioned around sexuality. And this goes for women and for men. Like women get, for instance, all these, you know, you have good girls don't, um, are not nasty <laughs> or are not, uh, are not horny or whatever. So good girls don't do that. So there's this whole paradigm uh, which I think kind of stems from religion. It's the Madonna versus horror theme. So either you're a good girl and you're decent and you, um, so that means you behave a certain way. So you certainly don't, you're not too confident. You're not, you're not uh, too expressive. So if you're, if you're a woman and you really own your sexuality, your sensuality, you own your body, you own your beauty, um, quite often you get faced with a lot of judgment. So people will say you're a slut if you're, if you're wearing something that um, is too revealing or if you're actually owning your own body, your own sensuality. There's a lot of stigma in um, society and a lot of um, repression, especially towards women, but also towards men. Like men get this feeling like you have to be a certain way, you have to be masculine, you're not allowed to show feelings, you're not allowed to cry, you're not allowed to be soft, you're not allowed to really feel actually, and connect and talk about feelings. And uh, I've been doing a lot of work during those last, I don't know, 15 years or so, because I myself had to, even more than 15 years, I think, because I myself had to heal a big part of my life. Um, I grew up being shamed for my body, so I cannot remember a time when I was not ashamed of my body. Um, I think my mom put me on my first diet when I was seven, at least that's what I can, around that time, you know, like that I, that I can think back of, maybe even earlier. So my, my body was never okay. And this is not to blame my mom because she, she didn't know better. She has been brought up the same way and she probably just wanted to protect me from, uh, from going through with the feelings she had to deal with. But what actually happened was I started uh, feeling like I'm not okay, my body is okay, and I totally disconnected. Um, this meant that I had, that I developed severe um, anorexia when I was in my teens and I got hospitalized weighing only 38 kilograms and uh, the doctor said, you know, you gotta, you gotta stay here otherwise we're afraid you're gonna die. And um, so I got out of hospital, the hospital obviously, and then I um, developed bulimia and this would go on for years so it took at least 30 years of my life and i say it took deliberately because it took a lot of a lot of things in my life away not only did i hate my body and i did not own my femininity and i did not own who i am my power my worthiness um i would I would constantly judge myself, I would constantly be afraid, I was con would constantly hide um, and of course I would do so with men as well and in my own sexuality. It would go that far that um, I did not get my period anymore because I, yeah, because of all the uh, not eating, starving my body that I did. So I didn't have my, my period for years and years and years and uh, no wonder my libido went down and I was totally disconnected from my body. So if you, and I am not the only one. I mean, there's tons of people out there, tons of women being bombarded with the issue of you have to look a certain way, you have to be super skinny or you have to be this or you have to be that and uh, what this what this does is it puts a barrier between us and our our nature our beauty and um, our bodies and 
in my case, I was, I went completely numb. And um, I mean, yeah, I did not, I did not allow, allow man close to me because I was fucking afraid. <laughs> I was very afraid. Um, and I was, I thought, okay, what if this person would see me naked? And I even had that thought when I was just 38, weighing 38 kilograms. I still thought that I was not okay, that I was in some way too big or I distorted it. And I always hated my belly, even with 38 kilograms where you, I, I, you can't have a belly. <laughs> and, um, but in my mind, I looked totally different than I did. And I, I, I was never pretty and it never, uh, and never was about the weight that I had. It was always about um, this image I had in my mind of how a perfect woman had to be. And I could never live up to that. So I totally disconnected. I disconnected from anything pleasurable, anything erotic, anything um, sexual. And I disconnected from my own body. And this means that uh, Yes, I have had partners in my life and I had one, one <laughs> really long relationship and uh, I had some other partners, but um, I, for the longest time, I did not have a partner. And then this resulted in shame because what's wrong with me? Society, everyone is sexual. You're supposed to have a partner. You're supposed to uh, be sexually active. My friends would ask me, uh, what about man in your life? And I would always say, oh no. But what was worse than that was that even I was not in my life. So right now I don't have a partner, but um, my sex life has never been better. Um, because eventually I discovered that I can actually heal myself. And tantric and Taoist philosophies have helped me tremendously and are helping me right now. So for years I've been studying Tantric and Taoist philosophy and most even more important practices. There are so many amazing practices you can do as a woman to start reconnecting to your body. And for me it went, it, I think it all started when my period came back and um, a year later I would develop really severe cramped during my period so I could not do anything I would literally need, be kneeling on the floor not knowing where to put the uh, where to put my hands because my, my belly hurt my back hurt and uh, I could I could hardly breathe and this was so bad that I, I couldn't work or do anything during that time and by then I had already discovered the connection between our emotions, suppressed emotions and uh, diseases that we get in our body. It's literally a disease. Something is not easy. And um, whenever we don't pro process emotions and um, many of us don't pro process emotions, so we don't allow ourselves like kids to cry when we are sad or scream when we are angry. So what we do most of the time is we keep our, our posture and we keep our fake smile and we keep our mask. We don't talk about it. We're not honest. We're not truthful. And what happens then is that this emotion cannot flow through us like it can with a kid. So like my nephew, for instance, when he when he's, he's throwing a tantrum, but the next moment he smiles, he's happy. So he's, he's back there and all's good. And um, we don't do that. And it's actually scientifically proven that repressed emotions get stuck in our body and uh, cause an energy blockage, an energetic blockage. And uh, if we do this often enough, and we do, we develop diseases. And in my case, it was a severe menstrual cramps and I had ovarian, ovarian cysts earlier and I even had yeah, to go through sur to surgery because of that. So. Um, I thought, okay, how long do I want to keep doing that? And um, then I discovered Tantric and Taoist practices and they have helped me tremendously. And I'm, for the last, I think, three or four years, I'm now discovering, reconnecting, and I've never, I've never been more in tune with my body. 
I've never been um, more. I've never been more comfortable with my body, and uh, not a hundred percent of the time. Sometimes, still, all thoughts come creeping in, and I judge myself. But my life is tremendously better. I love myself so much more, which is fundamental for living a happy life. Because if you cannot love yourself, you cannot love anybody else, and um, and you cannot love anything else. Sexual energy is a tremendously powerful energy and um, if you too have negative thoughts about your body or issues or you want to heal something, you can use sexual energy to heal any blockages and move them out of your body. Um, this is not something that, uh, that is a quick fix, it actually goes to the root and you will have to deal, be open and willing to deal with your stuff to really see where you're, block, where you're blocked and where your blocks come from and uh, you will have to work through them and uh, face them. And with the help of these practices I was able to let a big amount, a big chunk of my issues go and uh, <laughs> and find myself and become the person that I am and that I want to be and the good thing is it's not over yet. So right now I'm in the middle of um, a salon. I, I do a lot of uh, stuff lately and I really enjoy it. So. Um, some of you know that I did a 30-day practice that uh, was called Sensual Goddess uh, Practice or Sensual Goddess Course, something like that. It was 30 days of doing something pleasurable for yourself every day and it was from self-massage to a yoni act practice to um, exploring different kinds of orgasms and uh, circling your orgasmic energy in your body. So uh, for some of you, that might be something that you cannot picture, but uh, I can go deeper to this topic topics as if you want me to. Um, and then I started doing the, um, the seven day well-fucked woman challenge by Kimanami, who's a Tantra teacher that I've been following for quite a while. And um, so it was, her mantra is meditate, masturbate, create. So she would, it's not her mantra, but it's what she, she used to do and she really says it's a really powerful practice. So for seven days I would do pretty much the same. And um, it, was, it was amazing. So it gave me so much more clarity and energy and drive. And uh, there was actually so much knowledge behind uh, all of that. So, I mean, Tantric and Taoist practices are thousands and thousands of years old. So they have a proven wisdom. And, but what Kim brings to the table is actually a scientific approach. So most of the things that she shares, she under undermines with scientific proof. So it's not just some esoteric um, practice, but it's all scientifically proven. And, um, I was super happy to discover last Friday, because I did not uh, even even imagine this could be, that I actually, due to doing this challenge, won her salon, one of her salons, which is also called Wellfuck Woman, which is going to be an eight-week course um, that uh, I'll be doing right, I am doing actually right now, so I, I already started. I may need uh, a little longer than um, eight weeks before, uh, because uh, next week I'll actually go to a gathering for five days, um, a women's gathering, and by the end of the month I'll be in LA and go to Burning Man again, to actually a camp that is dedicated to um, practices like that. And uh, yeah, but uh, it's an online course, I can do it anytime and um, I'm really diving deep right now because these teachings, these practices, these tools have been amazingly healing for me and uh, 
I just wanted to share that with you because uh, we don't talk about sex. We don't talk about our issues. We don't talk about anything that we are ashamed of. And body image, um, a low libido, or um, all of the things that I just shared with you are usually things that we don't talk about. And I, for the longest time, did not even talk about this with uh, my closest friends or my family. And being able to own it right now is, is, is huge for me. And it's uh, so liberating. So I thought I'd share this with you because maybe there's one of you guys out there who can benefit from um, from knowing this and if you have any questions or want to know more just let me know and ciao for now